Mike, Mike Drop Podcast. Uh, my name is Mohammed. I work with the people seeking asylum and refugees. And I've been working with the Many Hands, One Heart, a supporting agency uh, or group for the LGBT plus people seeking asylum and refugees. Today I'm going to welcome um, one of our oldest members, if probably the oldest member, Sam. Uh, and we're going to have a chat about, you know, some of the issues about his life here and aspiration that he's got. Good morning, uh, Sam. How are you today? Good morning, Mo. I'm good. I'm fine. Uh, can you just tell us first, you know, um, a little bit about yourself, where you come from and how old are you? In... Uh, I'm from Malaysia. I'm 68 years old this year. Uh, how long have you been living in UK? I arrived in UK in 2005, so I'm in 15 years in UK okay, now. Okay. And you got your refugee status now, have you? Is that right? Just yes, uh, I got my refugee status on the December the 4th. So I'm very happy I'm granted the risk to remain in UK for yeah, five years. Yeah. How long were you waiting for that? How long did it take? Really you four, years, four years, uh, years, finding a battle with the uh, Home Office. I was rejected eight times, so I still keep on fighting and still appeal yeah, and yeah. keep going on. Yeah. We talk about that a little bit as well, you know, later on. Uh, first, I wanted to talk to a little bit about your life back home in uh, Malaysia. Um, um, Obviously, when did you realize that you were um, a gay man or you had you were homosexual? I realized I was gay when I was in a primary school at the age of 12 years old. Yeah. How did you find How did you realize? Uh, because we, at the time, we don't like to mix a lot with girls. So we have, I have a boyfriend in my same school, the same class. Mm -hmm. So we got, all, got along very well. And how did you feel about that? Oh, we feel very comfortable, so we always check together. Mm. And he used to come to my house. Mm. But were you like scared, or were you, you know, scared that people find out? What What is it like to if you can you actually live openly as a gay man in your country? No, in our country is uh, actually not because it's a Islam country, Muslim. We can't explore our sexuality as a gay man. Mm. If we explore ourselves, we put in prison or we put in the public raping. So, except your boyfriend, um, your parents didn't know anything about your sexuality? Is no, right? we try to keep away from them. We uh, don't let them know. Okay. And um, just, I know that you got married and you had children. Can you just tell us a little bit about yeah. what happened? Yes, I got married. It was uh, it's for unforeseen <laughs> circumstances. We went for a holiday trip, this a one night stand. So she got pregnant and I was forced to marry mm -hmm. uh, My ex-wife parents said you gotta marry her because mm -hmm. she's already pregnant. Mm -hmm. And did you carry on living, uh, what, what, did you live as a hom heterosexual or did you still have like hidden homosexual, had a relationship with other men as well while you were married? Uh, not exactly, because I still go to Thailand uh, quite often mm -hmm. to look for those uh, lady boys mm -hmm. in Thailand so just to certify mm -hmm. that I still continue as a gay man mm -hmm. but nobody you know your wife didn't know about your sexuality no yeah she didn't know I didn't mention to her after that she realized that why do I go to Thailand too often mm -hmm. and I think she realized she found I'm gay that's why she took my money and ran away with my children when they were very young my older one was six years old, my younger was only four years old. Yeah, so you haven't seen them since? I haven't seen them and no connection until mm. now. Have you tried to con connect, um, contact them? There's no way I can contact my ex-wife my children because they are in America. So unless if they call me, otherwise I got no other ways yeah. to contact them. All right. And uh, after your wife left you, um, did, did you have, what, did you live, carry on living in uh, Malaysia or did you move from there to, to come here or anywhere else? I still carry on my business because in Malaysia I'm a businessman. I have an iron factory, I have two cars, mm. uh, two houses and two trucks and more than 10 workers. Then when my ex-wife uh, ran away, I don't con can't concentrate on my business and I try to get money from the loan shark and I can't pay back they come and look after me and beat me up mm -hmm. and uh, kill, want to kill me. Mm -hmm. That's why I have to run away from uh, Malaysia to UK. Mm -hmm. When did you come here? 
It was 2005, it's 15 years from now. And, and did you start working? Did you work? Yes, I did. When I, when I arrived in the UK, I was in Chinatown. I looked at the Chinese paper. So they said they can get me a work permit mm. for 3,500 pounds. So I can start working. So at that time, when I get a job, I can't get paid because I have to pay back the debts to the Chinese agent. Mm. To get a job, they also uh, take 250 pounds from my wages. So I didn't get any money until I finished my debts about one year. Then I left. I went to get a new job in Cornwall. All right. I believe you were quite popular in Cornwall. They used to call you Uncle Sam, is that right? Yes, and uh, when my petition was online, I think some of my old younger people, when I met them, when they're young, they used to come to my Chinese restaurant and they grow up. They also advertise on their T-shirt when they're at work, mm. Save Uncle Sammy. Mm. Don't tip pop, Uncle so Sam. It wasn't your restaurant. You work in that restaurant. You didn't own the restaurant. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't own them. I worked for them as okay. a manager. And did you, you know, again in Cornwall or when you came to UK working, did you have any relationship with any, uh, with any gay men? Not at all, because it's uh, especially I'm a Chinese, and I'm also not don't have money. I need got five pound a day to survive. No, I'm just talking about when you were working in the restaurant. Oh, in the restaurant, no, because my uh, boss don't want people to know that I'm gay. That's why he said you got to keep yourself secret. I do go down to London to the gay mm -hmm. bar. Mm -hmm. They call it Cool Bar in London. Mm -hmm. So I just when they hang around during my day off. Okay, all right. And when did you um, apply for asylum? When? What happened? How do, you know, obviously you were working in the restaurant and you said there was a petition to save you, you know, not to send you back. What happened? What, what exactly happened that you, all of a sudden, you became sort of, um, couldn't stay here in the UK? What, and when did you apply for asylum? I applied for asylum in, I can't remember exactly when I was in the detention centre in London. Mm -hmm. And I found one of my roommates. So we also have a relation with him. Mm -hmm. He's from China, so he already deported back to China. Mm -hmm. So at that time, we are, I applied for my asylum as a gay man. How did you end up in the detention center? Sorry? How did you, or you say you were in the detention center? Yes. What happened? Why, what happened that you went in the detention center? The reason that I was in the detention center when the enforcement officer came to the restaurant when I was working, they came and looked for one Chinese man that he didn't report to the home office. So I was in the counter. So the officer asked me to produce my ID. I told them I, I don't have my ID because I lost my passport. Mm -hmm. I couldn't renew it because I don't have the old passport. I went to London to the Malaysia High Commissioner. I can't renew it because I don't have my previous old passport. Okay. And uh, I mean, you are very famous, aren't you? You've been interviewed on the television and you've been interviewed by Guardian newspaper and Liverpool Echo and a lot of people in Liverpool know you, in, especially in the people that work with the people seeking asylum. Um, and, you know, it was about your case. What was the special about your case? What did they, why, why did your case was rejected? You know, did they say you're not gay or did they say that, you know, what was the reason? Uh, the Home Office rejected me because they said I don't have a gay partner, so they don't believe I'm gay. At that time, when I arrived in UK, I can't expose myself. I still keep myself hiding. When I came to know St. Bright Church, that they have the LGBT group, mm -hmm. that's how I exposed myself. Then I I've come to know about You didn't expose me. yourself. You just told people. I told <laughs> people. And then I came to know about uh, Many and One Heart. I come to attend most of the meeting if I can. And also the one hangover straight the Amistic Center. Mm -hmm. I do attend the meeting there quite often if they have a meeting. Mm -hmm. You're very popular. Everyone likes you. Yeah. And you always uh, make everyone, you know, happy. Um have you just tell us a little bit about your life here in as you know, like you know, with your age, you know, your health and stuff like that. 
at the moment, I think the uh, reason it was popular because it was published in the Echo and the Guardians and quite a lot of people all over the world. It just go wild. Everybody knows me. Even people I just know them when they come and see me. He said, oh, yeah, Sam, I saw you on the telly. I saw in the newspaper. And people in Kirby also know me. They treat me quite well because they know that I'm gay. They didn't try to say it against my offense about my sexuality. Yeah. So you, you live in Kirby outside Liverpool? Yes. Okay. And the moment, sorry. No, no, carry on. Yeah, the moment I'm quite happy because I'm studying in the city of Liverpool College. I'm in level two. I'm doing travel and tourism, which I used to do before in Malaysia. It's my ex job, so I really love it. I enrolled for my next year, two more years in uh, Liverpool for level three for the travel and tourism. Mm. Then I want to become a qualified tour guide again. Yeah, that's what exactly was going to ask you. My last question was, what are your uh, aspirations in the next five years? Where, where do you want to see yourself? Where are you going to be in five years? So you already answered that. You're going to be a, a tourist guide. Is that right? Yeah, you may see me in front, standing in front of the St. George Hall one day <laughs> with a flag. Welcome to Liverpool. <laughs> I'm a your local tour guide. Especially in, uh, because of virus, I think if the people from China... Mm. I'll be expecting to give them a tour because I can speak multi-language, especially mm -hmm. Chinese. And also at the moment, I work as a volunteer in Salem Link. Mm -hmm. I work in the front desk and I do some interpreter job also in people who come from China doesn't speak a word of English. I do an interpreter for them for two days, Thursday and Friday. I used to go there for work as a volunteer for four hours a day. You're a really, you're really, really inspiring person. Yeah. And you give a lot of people hope, okay? I think a lot, all, people, not true. a lot of people like me, even when I was in the college, my teachers were like me. They like me as a class rep. Mm -hmm. And after they like me as a student rep. <laughs> so I'm qualified to go to the parliament to speak on behalf of the LGBT group or so. Yes, oh, fantastic. Thanks very much, Sam. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're most welcome. Huh? Mm -hmm.